Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about Fashion File. There has been a pretty significant policy change that Fashion File at some point between last year and now implemented, and I had no idea this was going on. So I definitely want to bring you all up to speed. If you've ever shopped on Fashion File before, I think you might be surprised to hear what I'm about to share. If you've never shopped on Fashion File, also very good for you to know. So either way, I think this will be an interesting video. As you can see, I have these three bags sitting out here. I'll show you quickly. All of these have been purchased on fashion file dating back to I think 2018 or 2019 this was my first time ever purchasing any pre-loved handbags ever so obviously I was a little jittery about it I was kind of nervous and I have to say my experience with fashion file at the time was really positive I was happy to find this Chanel wallet on chain black caviar silver hardware because this was sold out across all of the boutiques in the US at the time I had been searching so I found this in pretty much new condition full set meaning it came with every single thing that it would come with from the boutique including the retail tags attached stickers intact dust bag authenticity card box all of that and so I was really happy and the price at the time was quite good it was I think like $50 less than retail which i was like yes nice now i do think that was because chanel was in the process of updating the clasp here or the closure here so now they have the magnetic clasp so a lot of people really prefer that i am good with this old school classic little snap button here it's not as easy but i'm totally fine with it so maybe that's why i got a tiny bit of a discount at the time but it was a really good experience so there goes that and then i also now this dust bag did not come from Fashion File, I picked this up from Zumoni. Usually I get all of my organizer inserts from them, but they also make this really nice microfiber, nice quality dust bag that works really well for my Chanel Classic flap since I don't have a proper dust bag for this. So if you're interested in Zumoni, I always have a 20% promo code down below in my description box. All right, so this is the vintage that I hunted down and I will say it was really fun to shop on Fashion File and really hunt because now I got my taste of getting the Chanel walk and I was like, yeah, I became a believer of the pre-loved market. So after having several quality issues of Chanel Classic flaps that I had to return from the boutique, I was very disappointed. And so I started my hunt and I found this Chanel Vintage Beauty with the silver hardware. It's all black lambskin. It's got, this is from a different bag, the dust cloth. It's got the classic burgundy lining on the inside. So anyway, this also was a really good deal and I saved quite a bit compared to boutique pricing because it's vintage. And then I also got this one here, which is Celine. And you all know, you probably have been hearing the noise I've, I've mentioned. The classic box bag from Celine, which is from the Phoebe Philo era, who was the former creative director. She had like a cult following. This is being discontinued or already has been discontinued. You're not going to find a lot of these in different colors and sizes anymore. It's going to be very limited inventory because they're trying to move away from all of the Phoebe designs and really push the Triumph bag and the new designs. So this is just a beautiful bag. And I also scored this for a really good price on Fashion File. So overall, I would say about... 80 to 90% of my experience with Fashion File has been really positive. There have been times where I ordered something and what I received was not what I expected because there were defects or changes made to the item that were never listed on the posting. So you just have to be really careful. But I always said this, this is the important part. I always said, Fashion File has a very generous return policy. It was 30 days. I think it was 30 days from the date of receipt. So as you receive your delivery from then on your clock starts i believe i'm trying to go off memory because it's been a while since i shopped on fashion file and so if you change your mind or they send you something that's not accurate and you're like hey this is not what i paid for you had 30 days to contemplate it and make a thoughtful decision and then return it if you wanted to and each time i've returned things i think i've returned like maybe four or five items in the past um, probably two, two or three times my fault because I changed my mind or it was impulse shopping. And the other two or three times maybe because they were not accurate. But whatever the case, I always felt like, you know what, it's okay because there's this generous window of time and it's a great policy because people are spending a lot of money and it could be nerve wracking at times. And we are oftentimes picky about what we want. And if we're not 100% happy, it needs to go back. So I thought their system was really good. So here's the thing. Recently, a friend of mine ordered something. She was super excited and she stumbled upon the newly updated 
fashion file return policy. And the return policy is nowhere near as generous as it used to be. They completely changed it. So I'm going to go into the nitty gritty. I'm going to pull up actually snapshots of what's on the fashion file website. And I'm going to read to you word for word some of the sections that stood out to me because you need to be aware because you might actually assume that it's still a 30 day return window and all the generous sort of um, the ways they used to do things. And if you order something and you think, oh, I have time, you might wind up exceeding that window and then being stuck with the bag because they're not going to refund you anything if you're past the new window of time. So let me get into the screenshots here. All right, here is what the new return policy says. We will gladly accept eligible returns within 15 days of the shipped date. 15 days of the ship date. Very different from 30 days. I believe last time it was 30 days from the date of arrival. I could be wrong. But let's take a closer look. It says items must be postmarked within 15 days of the ship date. If the return does not meet that requirement, the item will not be eligible for a refund. So you don't get your money back. The item will be considered for our refresh program if eligible. So the refresh program is when items purchased from fashion file may be sold back to them for a percentage of the purchase price. And then it says the sooner you sell it back, the higher percentage you will receive. So if you miss that window of time to get a proper refund and it gets back to them late, they may consider it for a refresh. Just keep in mind that if you do miss that return window and now your item is eligible for the refresh, it's possible that Fashion File will take a 30% cut of the price that you paid with you getting only 70% back because that is typical of Fashion File. Historically, they will take about a 30% cut to relist an item and sell it to another customer. Items must be in the same condition with no missing extras. Of course, this is all customary. And return shipping, customers who have purchased items online or at one of our showroom locations have three options to return. Now, this is interesting to me, so I wanted to dissect these three options. So the first option is use a prepaid UPS shipping label provided by Fashion File that's now going to cost you $14.99. It used to be free. It was always free returns. It's now $14.99. You can also use your own shipping method at your own cost, but more on that later. And then you can return at your nearest location, which is free. I'm like, okay, that's not, that's not a bad option. Now let's look at the return fee one more time. Customers who use the prepaid UPS shipping label have a $14.99 fee deducted from their return amount. Okay, so now you're gonna eat $15. If you prefer to use your own return shipping method, please ship your items with adequate insurance to cover the value of the return item, include a signature requirement and obtain a drop off receipt. Okay, so this is all to safeguard the package. But know that if you're ordering, for example, like a $4,000 designer bag, the insurance to cover it is not going to be cheap necessarily. That's extra cost. International return shipping is the responsibility of the customer. I think that was always the case. So no change there. Refunds will not include any original domestic or international shipping costs, including customs, etc. Okay. Now, if you're returning in person, right, you're thinking, oh, that's actually the simpler method. If I have a short window of time and I'm worried about the mail being delayed or I can't get myself to a UPS drop-off center or I don't know, whatever the case, you can literally walk into a location and have peace of mind that you've returned your item safely. So I went and looked at all their locations and they have quite a few now. They have expanded from Arizona to California. There's tons of locations in California, Colorado, Florida, all the way through. I checked the entire listing, I think there were about 30 locations or so. So you think, hey, if there is a location near me, I'll just simply drop it off. However, I started to randomly click on some of these locations and you can see here in red, it says, service desks are for dropping off pre-quoted items only. Returns are not allowed at this location. Here's another one in Fort Worth, okay? Meaning you can sell pre-quoted items. You know, you submit photos of something you want to sell. They give you a quote, you accept it. You can go and drop off that item you want to sell at these locations, but returns are not allowed. And this is what I saw on many of the locations that I clicked on. Okay. I'm going to keep going. So here's San Diego. I clicked on just a bunch randomly all over just to see. So you can't assume that just because there's a location near you that you can return your item there. No, no. Okay. That's not a safe assumption because as you can see, all of these that I'm showing you will not allow you to return 
at any of these locations. I clicked on even Honolulu. I was like, oh, they have a location in Hawaii. But no, you can only sell pre-coded items there. So then, of course, I checked on New York City where I am. And this is the largest location, the largest showroom. They, they constantly talk about it. It says walk-ins are welcome. Appointments highly recommended. Okay, so now you have to make an appointment. But it doesn't say clearly here, if you make an appointment, is it to sell or to return or to buy or all of the above? It's not clear. Now, this one in Scottsdale says by appointment only. Again, what does that mean? To do what? What is able to be done by appointment? Right under Scottsdale, it says selling studio at Neiman Marcus. You know, they're affiliated with some of the Neiman Marcus locations. But if it says selling studio at Neiman Marcus, are we to assume that you can only sell your items there and you cannot make returns? It's really not clear. Look, I'm not trying to be super nitpicky. Obviously, I'm a fan of Fashion File because I continue to buy and sell with them over the past five years or so. But this is an online business. Most of their business is done online with a few sort of brick and mortar transactions, more so now as they're expanding. But if they're primarily online and that's their presence, they need to be super crystal clear with the messaging and the information that they provide, especially around important things like return policies, where you can return, can you return at this location or not. I think that if they have a website that they're doing probably 80 or more percent of their business on, they need to put very detailed and clear and crisp instructions and not leave it up to the customer to sort of guess. All right, there's more. Then the site goes on to say that for those who purchase 10 items or more within a six month period, that's kind of a lot. I think I've I've probably purchased 10 items in five years and maintain a 70% or greater return rate. We do charge an automatic 10% restocking fee calculated as 10% of the sale price. Wow. Wow. Okay. Now this, I do understand from a business perspective, they need to safeguard their business. You can't have people messing around playing games. And so I get it. If you order a ton and you return a ton, there should be some consequence because even the large department stores, I think, will flag you if you are habitually returning items. So this I do understand. I think it's a fair policy. However, I have one question to challenge this policy. If Fashion File sends you an item and it is not as described on their listing, this has happened to me before. For example, let's say, make believe, this is listed as like new condition or new condition. I forgot the terms they use. But when I receive it, let's say there's a popped stitch in one corner and there's some marks on the bottom of the base of the bag and there's loose threads in the pocket. Okay, that's pretty egregious, but let's just let's just say something got messed up in the listing. The person who listed it didn't look carefully or they mixed it up with another Chanel walk. Whatever the case, I as a customer am not pleased because it's supposed to look and feel new, but it's got all these issues. If I return that and I cite the reason for my return is, you know, I'm disappointed with how it looks because this is not what was listed. I think there's a, a free form type box that you can enter the reason. If I do that, does that count towards the ratio of buy versus return? Because they're saying if you buy a lot and you return too much, you'll basically be flagged, which is fair. And then you will be charged a 10% restocking fee, which is 10% of the purchase price, okay, which can be a lot depending on the item. But if it's to no fault of my own, it's not because I simply changed my mind and I'm being fickle. It's not because I did impulse buying and now I regret it, but because I want it, but you didn't list it properly. And so now I have no choice but to return it because I paid X amount for something that is not accurate. Do they then put that in a separate category? Because that would only be fair, right? Do you guys agree with me or not? Am I being too prescriptive here? I think if you're going to have a policy that penalizes customers with a 10% restocking fee for over returning, again, which I think is fair, you have to pull out the returns that are in a sort of different category that were the fault of fashion file themselves because they did not do their job in listing the item correctly. I think this is a huge, huge component that needs to be considered. And the site goes on to say that in addition to excessive returns, items purchased on fashion file reserve will incur a 10% reserve fee, I guess, if you return it. Now, I didn't know what this was, so I had to 
kind of search it. And basically, Fashion File Reserve is when you do the layaway program and you have the option to be on a payment plan. I wish they had spelled this out on the site so that people would know what this is. Now, I do think it's fair that there's some sort of penalty or consequence if you were to use the layaway program and then change your mind and decide you don't want to go through with it. Because essentially, I'm going to use this as an example. If I chose this and decided to use the Fashion File Reserve or layaway, I would put a 25% down payment. Yeah, so it's like a deposit. And then you have a period of time that you can pay off the balance. And from what I understand based on my research, it's 0% interest. So there's really no additional costs. But if you are reserving the bag, that means you're taking it away from other people who might be interested. So it's kind of yours until you pay off the balance. But if you decide you're not going to pay off the balance and you just want to stop and get the rest of your money back, then I do see why Fashion File is charging a 10% penalty. So I know that was a lot of information, but I felt it was important to share with you the new policies, the policy changes, and the existing ones and call them out in a very detailed manner so that you're 100% informed if you are planning to shop with Fashion File. Or if you have shopped in the past, I think you definitely need to know what's happening now because things have changed. I'm just going to take out the chain and let her hair down. A little less stuffy while we talk. So here's my thesis, just to sum this all up. I feel like... Fashion File must not be doing as well financially as they have in the past, in the heydays, because it seems to me that they're sort of nickel and diming. And I get that some of the policies are necessary and they're very fair as a business practice, but you know, 10% penalty here and 10% penalty there and restocking fees and $15 shipping label, it really feels like they're just sort of like scraping. And I wonder if it's partially because they have expanded quite a bit. There are so many more brick and mortar stores across the US and that takes a lot of financial investment. So maybe they expanded too quickly and they're a little in over their heads or the fact that people are really not shopping designer as much as in the previous years. That is a known fact. The market has dipped a bit and that is globally. So maybe their inventory is not moving. Perhaps they have too much inventory. There was a period of time last year when a lot of you were actually telling me that you submitted quotes or you submitted items to sell and you were waiting for quotes from Fashion File. And so many of you let me know that Fashion File got back to you saying, we actually have too many of these items and so we're not taking any at this time. And these were very popular designer items that in the past Fashion File would have taken from you. So that tells me their inventory might be too high, which is a really kind of scary thing for a business. Um, and I feel like I'm seeing more of them on social media where they are advertising more. They're advertising on YouTube as well. They pop up on my videos a lot. And on Instagram, I've noticed a lot of videos from Fashion File talking about how this new bag is still really hot and trendy. You need to get one or this is 15% off now. So get it now while, while it lasts. And I feel like as normal as it is for any business to market their products, I feel like their advertising and marketing has really become a lot more. And I wonder if it's because they want to quickly turn over their inventory and they're having trouble doing that. So these are just my thoughts. I'm curious what you think about the $15 shipping label and the shortened 15 day return window uh, that starts, the clock starts on their ship date. I'm curious what your thoughts are. Is that too prohibitive? Is that going to stop you from consider shopping at Fashion File or you feel like that's not that big of a deal? Love your thoughts. Leave me a comment down below. If you made it this far in the video, if you made it to the very end, first of all, thank you for watching. Leave me a funny emoji, any funny emoji, just to indicate that you watched the whole thing so that you know it feels like it was worth my time to pull this all together and make this video. Thanks again for being here. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and you enjoy this type of content, I would love for you to subscribe and join our handbag loving community. See you all next time. Bye-bye.